Welcome to this SCORE webinar. Uh, this is the first in a series on ownership design uh, provided through SCORE Mentors Green Bay. Um, in some parts of the country, there's not good there's not a good enabling environment, not a good legal enabling environment, especially in the South. And so folks will set up an LLC, but it'll run practically and philosophically as a co-op. Uh, so, but you all in Wisconsin, you got good co-op legislation. Uh, so thank you, Wisconsin. Yeah, so uh, where I'm coming from, my experience is uh, very much with worker cooperatives, 20 years with Equal Exchange. Um, a, a national worker co-op now doing 80 million dollars a year in business it wasn't doing that uh, when i first arrived we were 12 people and so i was there 20 years and we worked with other co-ops food co-ops farmer co-ops uh, co-op banks and so i really got familiar with all the different permutations of the co-op world and the concept of co-ops uh, if you look back at one of greg's uh, slides uh, principle six for co-ops is cooperation among co-ops and so this kind of doubles what Lori was saying about you don't have to go it alone especially if you're in a co-op uh, one of the benefits of a co-op that wouldn't fit on growth side is how with co-ops you have a built-in system of people who want you to succeed um, just because you opted the cooperative model um, you know, uh, there are not uh, LLC uh, fan clubs like there are co-op fan clubs. <laughs> and so whether it is, uh, you know, technical assistance or just you need to make your first sale, like it was for Equal Exchange, it was food co-ops who they made, um, our, that they were the first buyers for our product. And we were often the first buyer of a farmer co-op in, you know, Ecuador, or Mexico, or someplace. So you have this co-op solidarity you can dive into. You know, it's a warm pool. <laughs> uh, enjoy it. So I want to talk about, uh, as uh, Lori said once uh, previously, was about uh, like maybe reasons to start a co-op or not to. Do you want to maximize your personal income, which is a reasonable goal for a lot of folks? Uh, do you want to maintain control of the business? in matters large and small? Uh, do you want to maximize the resale value um, of your firm? Now, these are all things that are often on people's mind. If these are some of the things that you're, that are prominent, next, then a co-op is probably not the best model for you. Um, that's not a slight on anybody, but the co-op isn't going to give you those things. So now, a lot of people start businesses for all kinds of reasons. Uh, it could be you love baking, and so you start a bakery. Um, and so I, for the entrepreneurs, I have this question, which is, do you prefer sharing something over having something? Do you prefer compromising and harmony, the harmony that can come from compromising and sort of joint struggle? Or like, do you just like, you have a vision and you want to do it your way? Or do you value process over results. Uh, so one of the things I saw often regarding process and results was, I mean, again, it kind of gets back to harmony. Um, if you want harmony, you want to do things in a way that's fair, that is perceived as fair and transparent. Um, so a good process can give you that harmony. You may not get what you wanted when the whole start but you'll still have the people around you. You'll still like each other at the end of the day. And then lastly, do you get excited about building something, albeit slowly, that could outlast you? I think a lot of co-op entrepreneurs, especially looking back, are what um, I've heard called cathedral builders. Because back in the day, you know, in the Middle Ages, in the Renaissance, people building cathedrals, the people who laid the cornerstone, they were never going to see the steeple. They were not going to see that cathedral finished. It could be 200 or more years before it was finished. And that was okay. They knew what they were getting into. And they and their community, whoever was behind that cathedral, that mosque, whatever it is, these magnificent uh, structures, they were building something as a group. It was going to outlast all of them. And they were going to do it together. 
So if those are things that you're excited by, then yes, maybe a co-op is for you. Um, so with that in mind, uh, I wanted to say a little bit about just some experiences with uh, my co-op clients over time. Um, and I, I've worked with some, uh, it could be worker co-ops, nonprofits who are starting social enterprises um, that uh, will probably become co-ops. Um, and then also multi-stakeholder co-ops. So I think for the focus of today's conversation, we're thinking worker cooperatives, but increasingly there are these other options like a multi-stakeholder cooperative where they have investors as a class, customers could be a class of owner, uh, the workers themselves could be a class. And so together these different sort of communities are part of the co-op. Um, so uh, Lori had asked a question about like, what, what could a successful co-op look like? And so these are the, some of the things that I associate with a successful co-op. Uh, like I said, they last and last and are never sold. Um, uh, we, sometimes in the co-op world, we talk about demutualization. So it's no longer mutually owned, rather it is sold. Like a, sadly, uh, um, True Value Hardware Store was uh, recently demutualized. Um, Ace Hardware is still owned by, it's a co-op owned by the sort of mom and pop businesses. Um, something else like successful co-op does. So, it, so it, it's not about like maximizing profit or maximizing wages for workers, um, but it provides the agreed upon economic function for its members. So like with the farmer, I could say Organic Valley, it's buying that organic milk at a good price and then getting it to market. Um, the function is it's sort of that um, collection, uh, production, uh, sales, marketing, distribution uh, function. Um, so for different co-ops, that function will be different. Um, also, uh, a successful co-op, it's going to be operating both at the governance level, like as owners, but also uh, internally, um, transparently and democratically. Now, so that'll mean open book management. It may not mean everything is known by everybody. The co-ops can turn a dial about how much they want to share, um, but big, basically assume transparency and democracy. And then regardless of like whether revenues are going up or down or they're expanding in size, a successful co-op is trust and value not only by its members, but also by the employees, uh, like a, you know, Organic Valley has employees. They're not members. The farmers are the members. Um, but it's also trusted and valued by its customers. It's basically, you know, a, an upstanding, reputable, or um, ethical uh, business. Um, so that's a kind of a nutshell of the things you may associate with a successful co-op. Um, again, it's not about booming revenues or profits or um, having a big, splashy name but serving its members. And some of them do it very quietly. Like many people have no idea that Associated Press is a cooperative. Um, it is owned by, you know, your small local newspapers and the, you know, could be very big media outlets. All of them are members of the AP and using its uh, sort of the news that it gathers and uh, disseminates. Um, something I wanted to say about, um, Oh, by the way, uh, one of my co-op clients uh, it came through the SCORE network, uh, thanks to Lori. And it's a, another example of sort of the flexibility of the cooperative model, uh, where they're looking at, they're, it's a small business and that its members may not only be like the founder and her first employees, but their customers. Um, so it gets back to that multi-stakeholder model that uh, I see coming up more and more. That probably needs to be a webinar all to its own. Um, but don't be surprised if as an entrepreneur, you see it, you know, you know, you're looking at it, you're looking at LLCs and public benefit corporations, worker co-ops. Um, when you're looking at like, okay, what are we trying to achieve and what are the different models, the multi-stakeholder model is another one uh, out there. Um, I'm gonna stop it there. I know one of the things we may all talk about would be things like uh, pricing of uh, equity shares, uh, how different co-ops handle pricing or membership, 
how you handle sweat equity for founders, but we can all talk about that together.